Uh, what's up, YouTube? Um, today I'm going to do Mollyan's guide, Mollyan's build order guide, and as well as just talking about, like, uh, strengths and weaknesses of the sieve, and, uh, yeah, how you can end the game, that kind of stuff. So, um, I'm going to be showing you a Castle Rush build order. Um, I don't, there's a Pro Scouts build order as well, um, you can find that on YouTube from several, um, several pro players or big streamers um i think we'll already have guides for that the pro scouts build is it's a really good build um in certain situations the thing about it is it it requires a lot of micromanagement you're managing your scouts to bring back and forth the deer or bring the deer to your base but you also like you need to you need to actually play the game as well right that's where I struggle, right? I, I don't, I don't necessarily uh, like have a hard time microing scouts to bring back deer. It's the fact that I'll be trying to do that and keep the scouts alive if my opponent's got spears to to contest. And then on top of that, I have to actually like respond to what my opponent's doing as well and play the game normally. And it ends up being too much, even for you know, even for me at a diamond conquer level. Um, I could just practice the build more, but I think the build is a little bit difficult. So the easier build is just Castle Rush. Um, it's really strong. So yeah, let's uh, let's dive right in. Now sometimes you're gonna have to make units and defend. Like I say this all the time. If I make a Castle Rush guide or anything like that, like sometimes you're going to have to make units and defend, especially if you're playing against like Delhi or Ottomans or. Um, Feudal civs, civs that are massing units in feudal. But uh, if you see that your opponent's going for, you know, multiple town centers or something like that, then, uh, you know, you're good to go. Just head straight to castle. So, yeah, let's get into the build order. Malians have a weird start um, compared to other civs. You're going to take one villager immediately and build your pit mine and put the other five villagers on wood. New villagers will be queued to sheep. So. Um, and, uh, we're going to be going for a stable the second we hit Feudal Age, so, um, that will be the goal, um, and to get these really annoying, uh, Warrior Scouts, uh, harassing. So, as you guys, if you don't know, the Warrior Scout is an extremely strong unit, um, right now, it's just, it heals extremely fast, absurdly fast, so... Uh, I think it will get nerfed in the future. So, after you build the pit mine, you're going to use this villager, and we're going to go up to six houses here. So, that means that these villagers need to um, deliver enough wood for um, the six houses, which is three drop-offs. Um, each house with mullions only costs 25 uh, wood, but when you build your houses around the pit mine, it increases how much gold you're getting from the pit mine. So it's really important to build your houses here, not, you know, around your town center or anywhere else like you normally would. So, one drop off, then you build the two houses. And now I'm just going to speed this up a little bit in the early game. Second drop off. Build two more houses, and it's actually, um, I'm sorry guys, it's just two drop-offs total. And uh, you can build all six houses, and then you'll queue this villager back to, to sheep. The wood villagers go to sheep after the two drop-offs. Everybody goes on sheep, and uh, you will need to bring back sheep to your town center um, fairly early, because you will run out of sheep if you don't. You see, at 1 minutes 50, I'm already starting to run out of sheep, and I got the, the sheep back just in time. So, yeah, all villagers just go to sheep right right now. We're going all on sheep. So you can see I have 12 on food, 0 on everything else. And we're just, uh, we're getting gold from our pit mine. 86 a minute. So, we're already way over 200, right, before we even get the food. Um, and it's just good to get this going as early as possible, as opposed to if you mine gold in the Dark Age, you're just kind of... I, I think you can actually technically maybe even get Feudal Age faster. I'm not 100% sure about that, but it's not good, right? Because it's better to just get the pit mine and your free gold coming in as early as possible. 
when you age up, you want to put six villagers on this age up and use the Mansakori. Um, the Mansakori will generate even more gold per minute. So it's really strong, and you can also switch it to stone later on. Um, yeah. And then at that point, you want to go down to <clears throat> four on food and get... Uh, I like to get eight villagers on wood here, so... You just get the straggler trees right now. We're not going to build a lumber camp. We're going to get all the straggler trees so that we can build a stable immediately before we even build a lumber camp. So it's really important to not delete your straggler tree when you place the manticore. Because if you place your manticore here, the tree gets deleted, and then they have to go out here. And there's no more uh, close straggler trees. So... The goal is going to be to harass with warrior scouts to distract your opponent while you go cast Lich. And you see immediately I take all six of these villagers and build the stable when I hit uh, Feudal Age. And then I'm putting them on food. I'm building my lumber camp now. And uh, it's good to have your scout in position and ready to uh, start harassing. So, I'll make a second scout before I make the Warrior Scout upgrade. Oh. And we are going to start harassing with the scouts. So, you can start on the gold or, you know, whatever exposed resources. But these things are super annoying. And even if they have a spearman or two, you can just pull these back and they just heal the full health. So, extremely strong. It's going to get nerfed. But for now, it is um, it is what it is. Um, yeah, the AI responds really poorly to harassment, so I, the harassment's not, uh, not super good at this point, like, like, doesn't really matter, we don't need to pay attention to it, your opponents are gonna hopefully respond better than the AI will, but, uh, yeah, just do the best you can and try to keep those scouts alive, because, like I said, they always come back to full health, you can even get under the TC a little bit if you have good micro and pull back the low health scouts, but that does take some practice. But yeah, you just want to get any of the exposed villagers. So, right now we have um, eight on wood and everything is going to food again. It, um, and I sent one villager to build another house here and a mining camp. On the gold, um, very soon I'll be using this wood I have to build a second pit mine. It'll be the first thing we go for. And uh, you can go up to like four or five scouts. I think I end up going up to like four. You can go more if you want to, but you don't really need to necessarily. Um, but like I said, if your opponent is building units and massing units, you you might need to respond to that before a castle age. Um, but sometimes you can just get away with distracting your opponent with just the scouts in their base, and you can keep their army in your base. So it's going to take practice for you guys to be able to judge that. But um, if you do decide that you need to you need to build units in feudal, just put a few more on wood. Go up to like 12 on wood. Build some more production buildings. Build a blacksmith and pump the kind of units you need. Respond to what your units, what your opponent's doing. Um, so I'm about to go back for this pit mine here in a second. And we're harassing with the scouts. These things are broken as hell. I say AI, so it doesn't... Not, not, it doesn't really matter, right? But... I just have the one villager on gold who built the uh, mining camp. And uh, I'm sending a um, villager to build the pit mine now. And houses around it. So you get a new... Every time you age up, you'll be able to add another pit mine. So you can get up to four. Four pit mines total. So I built four warrior scouts total in this build. Like you said, if you feel like you're getting really good damage out of your Warrior Scouts, or, um, you know, you want to build more, go for it, right? Like, if you're doing damage with them, it's worth it, so. Now, real quick, let's talk about um, the upgrades and stuff I'm getting. Getting Wheelbarrow, and I'm getting um, the Mining Upgrade. You want this Mining Upgrade really, like, it's really important because you're going to be putting, like, 26 villagers on gold in Castle Age. And uh, I bought a cow before I did this wheelbarrow, because you don't want to move out for berries. There's no reason to. The cow has a really good gather, gather rate. So you can buy cows from the mill. I placed the mill right next to the TC. 
um, just so uh, I can make cows and they just walk and they're right here. And uh, also later on, we'll put cattle ranches down around this and we'll put another mill here next to the berries. And you can use both of these mills to fill your cattle ranches with cattle. Now, when you need to buy the cow is going to be different every game. It's going to depend on how many sheep you got, right? But I went ahead and bought the cow before wheelbarrow because I was worried about running out of sheep. So yeah, that's what I did this game. But uh, we're not going to get any other upgrades in Feudal Age, just Wheelbarrow, Specialized Pick, and uh, that'll be it. And uh, this villager is completing this pit mine out here. And this whole time you can just be harassing with the scouts. They're so, so annoying. So, um, Yeah, we're just kind of cruising going to Castle now. All villagers go to food. All villagers go to food. You don't really need to mine gold, especially with the second mint pine coming in, and you got one villager on gold. You're all good. You know? I'm going to keep these seven villagers on wood because we want to get a few more. Um, there's a few more things we want to build. We'll get into that in a second. But uh, we're just macroing for castle right now. And I'm queued another cow after the wheelbarrow comes through. Harassing with the scouts again. things are really dumb so you can also by the way chase down your opponent's scouts with warrior scouts because the warrior scouts move faster do more damage and heal faster so it's kind of wild um and you can see i had some villagers go idle here because my cow didn't come out fast enough it's fine just move them to the berries if something like that happens but we're about to have the food any second anyways so uh, they'll end up going over to the gold Hmm. So, as soon as you're able to age up, you're going to drop the Fremda Garrison. And um, all of these villagers that build the age up will go to gold afterwards. These villagers are going to go to gold. In a second, we're going to pull some food villagers to gold. You can literally go up to like 25, 26 on gold because um, the Ferimba allows you to build five units at a time with... Uh, only gold, so I have some idle villagers here, guys. It's pretty bad, but they're gonna move out to the gold now, so. Moving everything to the gold, that way we can just pump units, you know. So right now, the first building I'm gonna build with my wood is an archery range here, as I hit castle. This way I can get the archery, the ar upgrade for the archers in, a, in this building without, um, Without wasting time in my Ferimba that could be used to be making units. So the the comp I'm going to go for, and this is the comp I suggest in most of the time, is going to be mass archers with some... Uh, you can eventually go for some Sofa to mix in, or you can mix in Donzos if your opponent is uh, going for Horsemen. Um, but yeah, the, the meta right now is generally to go mass archers with Poison Arrows and then add in Sofa behind it. And it might be a bit before you can really start to add in the sofa with this build because you're not going to have enough to drop a bunch of stables, but you can start slowly adding in sofa. Um, or you can go for Donzos, like I said, if your opponent's massing horsemen. So it's kind of up to you. Um, but once this Frumba goes down, we're going to go really heavy on the gold. Like, all these villagers will be on gold. All my new villagers are going to gold. I'm only going to leave six to eight on food probably um i think i'll go down to six in a second on food and you can add more to food once you start adding in the sofas because you will need it but um the second building we're going to build as soon as we hit castle here is a mosque and uh then we'll drop a blacksmith as well over here i'm gonna go straight for the relics because you're rushing castle you should get the relics right you should use your advantage of hitting castle and also the gold is, you know, it's free gold, right? And you can make units with gold, so it's really strong. Get this upgrade here in a second for the archers going. And uh, you just want to try to be constantly queuing units out of Fremba. Now at the start of Castle Age, it's a little bit rough to constantly produce. It can be hard until you get up to like 25 villagers on gold. But then it's quite simple. Just make sure you're always producing units. 
Um, if you need to switch units, you can switch so fast. Like, if you need, if you see a bunch of horsemen, you're like, uh oh, I don't have anything to do with this, you can switch so fast. It's an extreme benefit of the Furumba, so that you can just click on Donzos at that point, and you'll get five, right? So right now I'm queuing a, mo uh, a monk from the mosque. I'm sending my archers forward to try and do damage. And uh, I'm still harassing the scouts in the background. Um, once I get up to like 26 on gold here, I think I'll start queuing uh, to wood so that I can build ramps. Um, and yeah, I did go down to 6 on food eventually. And uh, still got the 7 on wood there. And uh, just try to be constantly producing from Ferimba. I mean, I'm still going to miss a couple because, like I said, until you get up to, like, 26 on gold at the beginning of Castle Age, you might miss a couple cues. But as soon as you can, get them, get it, get it building units again, right? <clears throat> I need another Lumber Camp here. I'm sure I'll build it in a second, hopefully. Going for Relics. Killing villagers on the wood line with our archers. So the thing about Farimba is you're just going to be able to get a lot of units really quickly, and you want to use those to do damage, right? That's the that's a big advantage um, of Malians. It's just how fast they're getting these units out, and all of their villagers just have to be on one resource to make the units. So it's really, really, really strong, um, like really strong. Uh, so yeah, just killing villagers right now with the with the archers. So. And I, I did end up getting this upgrade. We're getting blacksmith upgrades, uh, range defense, and siege engineering because we want to drop some rams. So once I get up to 26 on gold, I... Uh, in a second, I know I switch over to wood here. There it is. And we built the new Ember Camp. So, And I'm getting wood upgrades right now. Um, and that's the thing, like, once you start having extra gold so that you can produce units um, constantly, but you still have more gold than you need to produce units constantly, that's when you start going for more upgrades, and, you know, the blacksmith, the eco upgrades, um, just everything, really. All the upgrades. So, yeah, I'm not really doing too much anymore to attack this, because it is just an AI. I've already destroyed so many villagers. I mean, they're on 14 villagers, right? So, we don't need to pay too much attention to anything I'm doing down here. This is not representative of how we'll, a game will go. You know, I'm just trying to show you guys the build order. Um, but now I'm queuing, that I'm queuing you villagers to wood, I'm up to 13. Or, I'm sorry, I'm up to, well, still 7 on wood, but I'm queuing you villagers to wood. Um, I'm gonna, time to send out and get more houses going, because we are about to get house. You always want to build your houses around, you know, gold mines if you can, um, so that you'll be boosting your pit mines later. But um, eventually, it won't matter anymore, and you could start building houses in your base. But uh, yeah, the early houses you always want them around gold mines. And uh, we're just getting relics. We're showing right now, guys. Like this game is under control, right? And uh, let's talk about like what you can do from here. So. You know, in this version of the build, I'm going for an immediate siege engineering and getting a bunch of vills on wood so that I can go ahead and start making ramps and try to end the game. But there's lots of things you could do right now. You can skip siege engineering. You can just use your units to kind of, like, take map control. And uh, what you can do to, like, cement your win is start trading. And um, after, this, after we finish with this build guide, I'm going to show you guys a trick with the trade. Um, but yeah, this is this is a great time right here to go ahead and get the trade going. So you could be using your wood for that. Um, I don't normally play that way. I normally try to end the game um, with a big push right away. But I am thinking about switching into the trade kind of build in the future and playing that a little bit more. Because it's I think it's really strong to start trading and just keep going uh, into like your eco investing into your eco while also using your massive army to like just harass i think malians are kind of like king of harass um you know they have stealth mechanics on the musafati warriors so what that means is they have a q ability and um 
you, the Musafati warriors will actually become invisible to everything but scouts and towers and town centers. So the Musafati are really strong for raiding because if you, you just take a little group of five of them and run them around the back of the base and you can make them invisible until they literally are standing right next to the villagers and then attack. So the Musafati warriors are really strong for raiding and they're really strong against um, men at arms. So you, you mass Musafati against armored units. Like if your opponent's mass knights or men at arms, that's when you might want to go for Musafati. Otherwise, they suck in combat, so don't really use them. You don't want to like make a ton of them if your opponent's not massing armored units. But um, yeah, they're also really good for raiding. So anytime you switch into a new unit, like it's good to like get if you want to switch into units that come from a barracks, it's good to drop that barracks and get the upgrades for those units going in the barracks. So yeah, there's lots of things you can be doing right now. Like you could be getting more stables with your wood. Um, or you could be going into trade with your wood, or you can be going into rams right away with your wood, if you feel like you can just end the game and just keep making units from Ferimba. But, um, real quick, let's talk about the weakness of Malians, guys. The weakness of Malians is that you get this huge mass of units from the Ferimba, right? And it's really strong. It, it, they come out, um, it feels quick the first time you build a mass of units. But what happens is if you lose a fight with this and you get wiped, you're going to have a hard time replenishing your army until you get a lot more military buildings down. Because the Ferimba is pretty slow in a pinch. Like, if your opponent's pushing you and you have no army, the, and you're only getting units from Ferimba and a stable and an archery range, it's uh, it's going to be rough, guys. That is the weakness of Malians, right? So you really don't want to lose your mass. You really got to be careful of mangonels and stuff like that. But uh, even if your opponent goes for Manganels, like a lot of the times you can snipe them using um, the stealth mechanic with the Musafati, or you can snipe them with sofas, so or warrior scouts even. So, but you can also you can go into siege as well, right? Your siege and just get a lot more villagers on wood. Another thing I meant, forgot to mention, I didn't do it in this game, but um, one thing you can do when you once you get up to like 27 villagers on gold. 26, 27 villagers on gold, then you you have extra gold. You can swap this uh, Manzik Quarry over to stone, and then start stonewalling your base, or dropping keeps, or whatever you want to do with the stone. Um, yeah. So, the other thing I was going to mention is poison arrows. Um, as soon as you have the extra gold for your archer mess, grab the poison arrows from the archery range. It's ex extremely strong. Archer arrows deal an additional 3 damage over 6 seconds, so yeah, really strong. But um, yeah, this, like I said guys, this build is, um, I think this build is really strong. I think Mullions are a strong sieve right now. I think the scouts are broken, and um, I think in lower leagues, if you guys get this down and you learn how to use your units, um, you know, this will, this will be a really good build for you, um. So like, we can already almost build a ram right now at the 12, 12 minutes, 32 seconds. We're castle age. We've got 25 veteran archers on the field in front of our opponent's base. We've got, you know, our two pit mines with a third one about to go down. Um, we're getting, we've already got two relics in the bank. We're about to grab two more. And we're about to go for sacred sites after that. Like, it's a really strong build. And if your opponent doesn't know exactly how to respond um you're gonna do really well with this now i do start queuing some uh donzos in a second just because um you know they're building horsemen it doesn't really matter right because it's the ai but yeah i do start queuing donzos from here and i'll drop a barracks in a second so i can get my upgrades for the donzos like we talked about and uh, yeah, you can just move all of these villagers to the next gold mine when they when they empty this. So, cool thing about Malians, guys, when they empty a gold, like when it's completely out of gold, you'll still get passive gold from the pit mine. So, we're still getting 100 gold a minute here, even though we technically mined out all the gold. So, yeah. Um, let me check my notes and see if there's anything else we're missing. Because I, I don't think so. I think I talked about pretty much everything. Oh! Uh, another thing that is important to start going into in Castle Age is cattle. Uh, the cattle ranches. So once you have enough wood, 
for um, to, to start dropping cattle ranches. Just go ahead and drop those. I like to drop them near my TC so they're kind of protected and near these two mills. Oh, that's what happened to this. I was like, I wondered how this monk died when I was playing the game. It died to a wolf. Um, yeah, so... There's, there come the Donzos. Here comes the barracks to get the upgrade for the Donzos. So pretty soon here, I start floating a little bit of wood, and it's like, okay, I'm going to start building my cattle ranches right here. Um, I already have a ram doing damage at the front here, so... Yeah, I mean, this, once again, this is an AI, so it doesn't really matter. It's pretty easy to destroy them. But um, pretty soon here, I'll start dropping the cattle ranches. So what happens is you can... You build a cow, and you can garrison it inside of the cattle ranch, and then it's providing um, just free food per minute. So Malians are all about those free resources, the free gold per minute, free food per minute, and those are that's how they get their eco bonuses. You don't really need to go for another town center with Malians, um, and you, you probably can, but I don't think it, it, it really suits them, um, suits their play style. It's better to go for all these passive... Uh, resource generation things that don't take up population space, right? The pit mine's giving you resources without taking up population space. The cattle will be giving you resources. Here's the cattle ranches coming in without population space. So, yeah. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about is sometimes you're going to be um, the victim of Dark Age aggression. Um, especially like against Mongols and stuff, because people will want to push your pit mines and stop those as early as possible. Um, what you can do in those situations is just keep mining wood in the Dark Age um, and drop a barracks, because your Donzos actually have a ranged attack. So I don't show that off, but your Donzos have a ranged attack that regenerates, so they throw a javelin, and then that, that attack comes back like every 20 or 30 seconds or something like that. So you can use that to snipe a villager who's tower rushing you. You can use it to get an advantage against um, just spearmen in a fight. So it's really strong, and you also they also have a extra melee armor. So they're they're just stronger than regular spearmen. So yeah, I think that's about it. Um, the only other thing I was going to show you guys is how to do the trade trick. So I'm going to show you guys that real quick. But, um, yeah, you can go into the late game with Malians as well, like, go Imperial, you can do whatever you want. But, uh, I tend to think it's best to try and just end the game with a big push and cast rage, constant raiding. Um, uh, you know, don't let your opponent move out on the map, so. Yeah, I think that's probably the best way to play it. And, uh, real quick, I'm gonna show you guys the, um, the trade trick. Yeah, there's nothing else to see here. I'm just spending my extra gold right now on cattle, but, uh... Yeah, I already told you guys about that, so... Alright. Real quick, I'm just going to show the trade trick. And uh, if you already know how to do that, I, you know, that's all I'm going to be showing in the rest of the video, so... You don't need to watch. But, um... I mean, you can do this with any Civ, right? But, uh... I'm just going to show it, like, on a max resource... Thing real quick. Uh, just do a map that's actually you know good for trade. Wait. Oh. I accidentally had it set to random location for my spawn, but it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna show you guys the trick real quick, so. So, the trade trick is this. You want to have a market next to the neutral market, and then at least one market next to the neutral market, but you could build like four or five here if you're heavy going into trade. Um, and then you need a market in the opposite corner. Um, real quick while the villagers are walking out here. So... This is not considered a bug or bug abuse or anything like that. Uh, this is allowed in pro tournaments. Um, it was allowed in Golden League. So, yeah, everybody's doing this. You don't need to feel bad about doing this. Um, 
I don't know if it was intended. Like, I'm not sure if the devs intended it for it to be this way, but it is what it is. So, what you can do is you take this market that's next to the neutral market. This is where you're going to be building your traders for the most part. We'll build a couple over here. You take these markets and you queue them here. And then you shift queue it here to the neutral market. So what that does is when you spawn a trader, it comes out and its neutral market is instantly set. Its uh, home market is instantly set to here. And then it just grabs the gold from the neutral market and goes here. So you're saving yourself a trip. So we'll watch it happen real quick so you guys can see it. So like it comes out, immediately grabs the gold, 143 gold, insane, and it, it goes here. So when you start trading with Malians in Castle Age, if that's the route you choose to take, um, this you definitely want to take advantage of this trade trick. It will get your trade going much faster. So, all right, that's going to be it for um, my guide for Malians uh, for Season 4. Do you have any more questions about Malians, or um, if you want to see a specific type of guide, let me know in the comments. Like, comment, subscribe. Thanks so much for supporting, guys and uh, guys and girls. And uh, yeah, have a good day. Thanks for watching.